Hi, I'm James Catherall, a co-founder of Catherall Audio. And yes, you read that title right. We are talking about automation inside of MainStage. Now you might be thinking, how is that possible? There's not even a timeline in MainStage. How can you have automation without a timeline? And you'd be right, there's no timeline inside of MainStage. But what you can do is you can have a tempo inside of MainStage. And that's used for things like the metronome or delay plugins or anything of that nature that affects something over time. It needs that tempo. So this automation is going to be based off of that tempo ability inside of MainStage. Before we get too much further, this is a third party plugin that you have to purchase and install before you can start using it. It doesn't come native with MainStage. This was made by Brian Lee. We've talked about him before in a previous video. I'll link his channel up here and I'll put the links in the description as well so you can check him out and see all the awesome things he's done with MainStage. So first, I'm going to give you a demonstration of this plugin so you can get an idea of how the automation works and what it's doing inside of MainStage. Then I'll walk you through the back end of the plugin and we'll show you how to get it set up in your own concerts. So here we go. Let's check it out. I'm going to be using the wine glass sample library from Catherall Audio. Here's that contact interface with the sound. I'll put the link for this in the description so you can download it if you like how it sounds. So over here on the right, these two channel strips are my automation plugins that I'm using. It works inside of the scripter MIDI effects in MainStage. And over here on the keyboard, these two red spots are the automation buttons. That's what's gonna trigger it as I play. And what's gonna happen is this fader over here is gonna move up and down as I switch between two different chords. So here we go. So that was the automation. That fader is moving up and down without me having to do anything. I was only pressing keys on the keyboard and that was it. Pretty cool, right? So the cool thing about the plugin is you can also assign it to basically anything inside of MainStage. Anything that you would normally automate inside of Logic is also possible inside of MainStage with this plugin. So let's start walking through the steps of how to set it up in your own concert and we'll talk about how the plugin works as we do it. Step number one is you wanna open up Audio MIDI Setup and we're gonna be looking at our IAC drivers. So I'm gonna double click right here, and that's gonna open up the IAC driver window. You can learn more about IAC buses and how they work in one of our other videos right here. So once I have this open, I wanna to go to ports, and then I wanna add in a new bus by clicking this plus button down here. I've already added one, but what you wanna do is name it Auto CC because it's gonna be really important that you're always using the same IAC bus anytime you're doing this Auto CC plugin. Once you've done that, you wanna hit apply and then you're done in Audio MIDI setup. Now, back in our main stage concert, we're gonna add in a new patch. So I'm gonna click this plus button on the patch list and then we wanna add in a new channel strip. So I'm gonna to go to the right and push the plus button on channel strips and we're gonna be creating an external MIDI channel strip. So here on the right side for output, I'm gonna click this drop down menu and I wanna select the auto CC IAC bus that we created and I'm gonna click channel one. And then for audio output down here, we're gonna select no output and then I'm gonna press create. Now, once we're here, I'm gonna to go to the MIDI effects and I'm gonna load the scripter plugin. And once you have this downloaded and installed in the correct place, you should be able to click on this drop down menu and see it right here, 441K Auto CC. I'm gonna click on that, and then that's gonna load the plugin. This plugin has quite a few parameters that you can change, so let's walk through the list and see what each of them does. So starting at the top, we have output MIDI channel, and that's set to number one, and that's gonna match our channel strip over here that we had already set, so I would suggest leaving that as number one. Next is the target control number. So this is the CC number that you're gonna pick that you want the automation to happen on. So you can click this drop down menu, and this will show you all the different numbers. If you're gonna use this with a plugin to automate one of your plugin parameters, I would suggest going down to numbers 85 through 90 and picking one of those. But for this one right now, I'm just gonna pick number seven. Going on to the trigger note. So this is gonna be the note that actually triggers the automation to start. So we can go here and this is gonna show you all the different notes that you can pick. So let's just leave that on C3 for now. Next is trigger mode. 
We have first time and then we have always. So if you choose first time, that means that the first time you press that trigger note, it will go through the automation, but then every time after that, it won't. It will just stay where it was. Or you can select always, and when you do that one, anytime you press the trigger note, it will always start that automation cycle. If you need to reset the automation, you can just change patches and then go back, and that should reset it back to its saved value so you can do the automation again if you're doing first time. Let's talk about the next three parameters. We have tempo, duration, and delayed onset. These are all gonna be tied together. So your tempo is gonna be how fast or slow the automation is gonna happen. And then the duration is how many beats of that tempo is the automation gonna happen over. And then the final one is the delayed onset. So what you can do is have the automation start after a specified amount of time. And that would be this delayed onset. So you can have it wait 16 beats after you press the trigger note and then it will start the automation or you can just leave it at zero which means as soon as you press the trigger note it will start that automation immediately after that is we have the sweep direction which would be zero to 127 or 127 to zero and then we have sweep type and you can do linear or logarithmic if you pick logarithmic then you can also change this log curve for the log curve, if you have a low number, that means that it's gonna start slow and then speed up at the end. Or if you pick a high number, then that means it's gonna start fast and then slow down at the end. And then finally, we have the reset trigger. There's natural termination and then there's trigger note, note off. So for natural termination, that means as soon as you press the key, it's gonna go through the full sweep from beginning to end, even if you release the key. And then if you choose the note off one, that means if you release the key, it's gonna stop that automation as soon as you let go of the key. And those are all the different parameters. It definitely suggests taking the time to really dial in the tempo, the duration, the delayed onset, and then the sweep log curve, if you pick the log curve, which is what I usually pick most often. So from here, moving down the channel strip, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna mute it. And then I'm gonna double click the name at the bottom and I'm gonna call this auto CC. And then I also usually go to the attributes and I change it to a bright red color. So you can go here, this second set of colors are brighter. I usually like to pick a bright color, that way I know exactly where it is on each patch and I'll set it up on the trigger note so I can remember exactly what note is gonna trigger that automation. All right, once we've done that, I'm gonna go to this patch and I'm gonna do what's called skipping the patch. I'm gonna go up here to the gear and then I'm gonna click skip. So basically you can think about skipping the patch as minimizing that patch. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna take it out of your patch list and when you're doing your patch advance buttons, forward or backward, it will skip over that patch, but it will still exist inside of your concert. So it basically just makes it unselectable while you're performing. So you don't have to worry about accidentally changing to that patch. So that's the end of the plugin setup. Let's work on copying it into your patches and setting up the mapping so that the automation can start working. I'm gonna copy this auto CC channel strip and I'm gonna paste it as an alias in my different patches. So to do that, I'm gonna push command C on the auto CC channel strip and I'm gonna go to the wine glass and I'm gonna push option command V and that'll paste it as an alias. You can tell you did it right if you see this little green arrow. That means it's an alias channel strip. Now, once I've done that, I'm gonna to go to the layer editor and I'm gonna move this auto CC so it's only on the trigger note. And I had that set up on C3. If I click that scripter right there, my trigger note is C3. So I'm gonna go down here, double click, type in C3 for the low note and C3 for the high note. So now that auto CC is only over that trigger note so I can remember exactly where it's gonna happen. Now, the last step is to set up the mapping. So I'm gonna go up here to assignments and mappings and then to the right side where this gear is and click new assignment. And now once we've done that, we see it right here. It says no assignment. I'm gonna click on this and for device, I'm gonna set it to that auto CC bus that we created. For channel, I want this to be channel one, just like it was on the plugin. Type is gonna be absolute. And then the number is gonna be that number that we had selected in the plugin. So that was number seven. MIDI through is do not pass through, send value to is none, and then I'm gonna name it auto CC and hit enter. Now once we've done that, I'm gonna click on this mapping again and I'm gonna go down to the bottom and this is where I can select any of those different parameters on the plugins that I want to. So for this, I'm gonna click on the wine glass and then I'm gonna click on volume and that's gonna be that fader. 
But that is the area where you can select basically anything that you want. Any parameters and any of your different plugins will pop up in that menu. You just need to navigate it and select what you want. And finally, we have what I think is one of the more important parts of setting up this automation here on the left side. We have three values, saved value, range maximum, and then range minimum. So the saved value is gonna be what it goes to once you switch to that patch. So when you're changing through your patches and you go to that patch, the saved value is where it's gonna start. And then from there, the maximum is that 127 number in the sweep that we saw in the plugin. And then the range minimum is that zero number. So wherever you have the minimum is where it's gonna start as soon as the automation begins. And then wherever you have the maximum is wherever it's gonna end up as soon as it gets to 127. So for this one, I'm gonna set the saved value as negative 40. I want the maximum to be zero. So the fader just stops at zero. I'm gonna double click that type zero and hit enter. And then range minimum, I want to also set that to negative 40 and then click enter. And that's the full setup for the automation inside of main stage. So now let's test it and see if it works how we want it to. So if this is set up correctly, as soon as I push this C3, we should see this fader go from negative 40 up to zero. And there we go, it worked. So then from there, I'd probably dial that in a little bit more, make sure that the range maximum and minimum is correct and exactly where I want it, and the duration is how I want it to work. Let's talk about a couple more things we need to take care of when we're using this plugin. First, I'm gonna to go to layout mode. And you wanna make sure anytime you're using this plugin, any hardware device is set to a specific MIDI port. So here's my MIDI controller and I have it set up in my MIDI port. If I go to this second keyboard, I wanna make sure that this is set to something specific and not all, and definitely not the auto CC. And you're gonna check everything, the pedals, even this fader over here and all of these different buttons. I wanna make sure that none of those are set to all for the MIDI port. They all need to be set to something. If you have it set to all, then when the auto CC is working, it's also gonna be sending that information to that hardware device and that can end up crashing your main stage concert. Now let's go into edit mode. And then I'm gonna open up the preferences by pushing command comma. And under general preferences, we're looking at parameter values and then on patch change. There's two different settings for this. You can have reset to saved value or keep current value. I typically have it set to saved value. That way when I'm changing patches, I can know that it's gonna start at that saved value that I already determined, and it's not gonna keep the current value. Because if you're switching through those patches, then it's gonna be wherever it was last left instead of on that saved value that you'd already specifically determined. So for me, that one's best, but you can also do keep current value if you think that's gonna work best for you. So that's automation inside of MainStage. I think this is a great plugin. I use it all the time in all of my main stage concerts. I think it's really opened up the possibilities of what I can do while I'm performing. I really like it a lot because it also gives me the ability to have consistent changes inside of my main stage concert. Instead of having to rely on knobs and faders and moving them around to different places, I like to have that automation set up so I can know during my performances it's gonna stay consistent because I think that's best for me and what I typically do inside of main stage. So that's our video. I hope this was useful and it opened your eyes to the possibilities of using automation inside of MainStage. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have a MainStage topic you'd like to see us cover in the future, leave a comment down below. I will see you in the next one.